large part of our worship depends upon, of course, our faith. And I like to talk about faith because I think that uh, faith being the victory that overcomes the world, we have to have a very strong faith. We have to have a an active faith. We have to have a growing faith because if at any time we set faith aside, we run into a very dangerous situation in our spiritual lives. And I think that's what the Apostle Paul is trying to tell us in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16 when he talks about the shield of faith. Now, the shield of faith it is part of that Christian armament. The Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, that every Christian is a soldier. He's talking particularly to Timothy at that point, but that's for us too. We are soldiers. We are soldiers in a great battle, an eternal battle. And here's the thing about it. We've enlisted as Christians. We have made a choice and we said, I'm going to fight on the side of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, my King. My allegiance is to Him. I'm going to fight for Him against those forces that are against Him and which truly are against us. So that's what people on the other side don't understand. A failure to be on Christ's side is failure. <laughs> Completely, eternally. But some think that being on the devil's side is just a, a part of that battle and, and the, it looks like they're going to be victorious. We look at the world today and we wonder how in the world did it get in this shape? Well, here's how it got in this shape. A lack of faith, isn't it? A lack of faith in people and, and sometimes a lack of faith in the church. A lack of faith in the church has allowed a lot of things to happen. We haven't kept up the battle. But we choose to enlist, and when we choose to enlist, understand, we'll be attacked. Because this world and the enemies of Christ don't like it when someone stands up for Christ, puts on that Christian armament. Since we're going to be attacked, we must fight. It's a defensive battle in the, in the great sense. We, we have the sword of the word our only instrument of the offense everything else in that christian argument is defensive but the shield of faith is important and we'll look at that in a moment we must fight jude 3 we must contend earnestly for the faith once delivered which means go back Look at what the scriptures say. Look at what the early church was doing. Not, not the early church 100 or 150 years after Christ was born, but the early church 30 years after he was born. 30 years right after his crucifixion and up to the end of the writing of the New Testament. We have a captain. A captain to serve. He's the captain of our salvation. He's the one who's leading the way for us, showing us the way. And we have an enemy to overcome. In fact, we have many enemies to overcome. But here's the thing. Every Christian can be victorious. Now, notice I said can be. Not every Christian is going to be. Because Christians can fall from grace. We can slip away. We can lose our faith. And that's a very terrible, tragic thing. But we can be victorious because faith gives us the victory. So let's look at some things. This is just a general lesson on faith, looking at the shield of faith and, and considering it like a diamond. There are many facets. But this verse, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16, tells us so much about faith. First of all, it tells us about the place of faith in all circumstances. I, I, would, I would prefer if it said in every circumstance this is necessary. Why? Because there's no part of our life that is not touched by our faith. We are either theists or we are atheists. There's no in-between. Agnosticism tries to be all, all agnosticism is, is is believing something but really not wanting to take a stand, whether it's for theism that God exists or 
atheism that God doesn't exist. They said, oh, I just don't know. Well, that's just an unwillingness to really examine and take a stand for what they believe is right. And that's why Jesus said in the book of Revelation to the church of Laodicea, I'd, I'd rather that you were cold. I want you to be hot. I'd rather you be cold than to be lukewarm in this battle, in this fight. And that's, that's putting some interpretation on it. But that's what Jesus was talking about. So in all circumstances, the shield of faith is an indispensable part of the Christian armament. It's an indispensable part of a Christian's life. Hebrews 11 and verse 6, Without faith it is impossible to please God, for whoever would draw near to God, I like the way the English Standard Version puts that, Whoever would draw near to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently or who seek him. I, I like the diligently that the King James Version puts in. See, there's a mixture of things that you can look at. But this shield protects the soldier and every other piece of armament that the soldier has. Faith protects the Christian from attacks against truth, righteousness, preparedness, and salvation. You see, it's a spiritual battle. And those things are spiritually what we are fighting for, and the opposites of those are what we are fighting against. Then there's the priority of faith. The priority of faith. Take up, the English Standard Version says, in all circumstances, take up, but literally, literally, in the, from the Greek, it would be having taken up. That means it's something that's been done. And it's something that then that's not put down. Uh, in Mark 16, 16, he that believeth, that E-T-H, and it, it makes a big difference in understanding it's not that we believe one time and that's enough. That's a continual action. We have to continue to believe. We start believing and continue to believe, have faith until the end of our lives. But literally, again, having taken up. Now, now why is that the priority? What is a priority? Well, it's something meriting attention before competing alternatives. I've applied at Walmart twice, had interviews at Walmart twice, and that's the thing that they always ask. Can you prioritize? Do you know how to prioritize? Yeah, some things are important, some things are less important. It's all got to be done, but sometimes something is more important, and that needs to be done for it first. And that's what prioritize is, and that's what Paul's talking about here. Having taken up, the first thing we need to do is have faith. Without faith, nothing else is going to matter. Without faith, we could be baptized a million times. It would make no difference in our salvation. It would make no difference in our lives. Faith has to come first. The faith coupled with baptism equals salvation, Mark 16, 16. You see how that works? So having taken it up, hey, let's take up this shield of faith. Why? Because we cannot be saved without faith. Mark 16, 16. Okay. We cannot live saved without faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. We walk by faith, not by sight. We cannot die saved without faith. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, the last part of that verse. Eh? John tells us in John or Jesus tells us in John chapter 8 and verse 24. I told you that you would die in your sins. For unless you believe that I am, skip out the E because that should be in italics. It's not in the original Greek. Unless you believe that I am, unless you believe I am Yahweh, the one who spoke to Abraham back there years ago, unless you believe that I am, you will die in your sins. See how it is? Doesn't matter if we're baptized. Doesn't matter how many good works we do. If we don't believe, we'll die in our sins. Now, we need to be baptized because that's where the remission of sins lies, but not without faith. 
that shield of faith is so important. That's that priority of faith. But then Paul gives us a picture of faith. And he says, the shield of faith. In all circumstances, or yeah, in all circumstances, take up or having taken up the shield of faith. And he compares it, he gives us this picture metaphorically. Faith is like a shield. How is it like a shield? Well, let's look at some other places in the scriptures where the word or the term shield is pictured. Psalm 28, verse 7, the first part of that, the Lord is my strength and my shield. God is a shield for us. We're not in this battle alone. He's our protection. Providence, Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, all things work together for good to them that love God, to those who are, to them who are called according to His purpose because He goes before us and He surrounds us. What a wonderful thought that is. But also Psalm 91 verse 4, truth. The Lord's faithfulness is a shield and buckler. His truth. God cannot lie. It's impossible for God to lie. So all these promises that he makes, all these things that he has done, stem from his truth, his faithfulness. So we get that picture of what Paul's talking about in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16 when he talks about the shield of faith. Faith helps us in resisting the devil. James chapter 4 and verse 7, submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Well, how is it then that we resist the devil? How does the shield help us in resisting the devil, resisting temptation, resisting the enemies of Christ, our enemies? Number one, by giving us the will to resist. If we don't have the will to resist, we're not going to resist. If you know what a, an ohm meter is, you hook up an ohm meter, right, to a couple pieces of wire or to a circuit, whatever, you're going to find out how much resistance is in that wire or how much resistance is in that circuit, right? Very simply understood. And what God is doing in our lives is testing our resistance. What is it we're told in... Wow, I want to say 2 Corinthians chapter 7, maybe 1 Corinthians chapter 7. But God will not allow us to be tempted above that which we can endure. Well, how does He know? He's testing our resistance. He's testing our resistance. But unless we have the will to resist, we're not going to resist. Yeah. Oh, I'm just human, so whatever comes along, I can go through and we'll just let God forgive me. Yeah. No, there has to be a will to resist. Now, there has to be a knowledge, but we have to have the will. We have to have the desire to say, no, I really want to stand up and, and fight against evil. I want to be on Christ's side. And, and, and I want this, this battle that's going on around, I want to be victorious in that. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world. Hey, it's easy to be conformed to this world, isn't it? We live in it and there's pressures all around us. But we need to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. That by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. It's by testing. God is testing our resistance. He's allowing our resistance to be tested. Will we stand up in the test and show ourselves worthy? Secondly, uh, the scripture, uh, confidence to resist. Faith will give us confidence to resist. Paul says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now what does he mean all things? Doesn't mean we can sin. Doesn't mean we can give in to temptation, right? Doesn't mean we can have our own way all the time. No, what it means is anything that God asks us to do, we can do through Christ Jesus because he strengthens us. 
it, but it's because of our faith. Now you think of it in those terms. A confident spirit. The confident spirit in Christianity is a humble spirit. It's a meek spirit. It's a spirit that's not afraid to mourn. Say, uh, I had a lady talking to me about boldness this past week at Walmart. The boldness. Her boldness was a little bit different than what scriptural boldness is. Say, boldly approach the throne of grace. How? By getting on our knees. Humility. Say, humble yourselves in the sight of God and He will lift you up. Go in His boldness, not our own, not our physical boldness, not our, our, our knowledge and all that. Faith. Faith humbles us at the feet of God. And how do we resist? The scriptures to resist. Think about this. Jesus, Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, the temptations. You know, he's driven out into the wilderness to meet the devil. And he's tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, three are mentioned. I think there was a whole host. He was tempted in every way such as we are. But here are three in particular. And each one, he uses Scripture to resist Satan. Even when Satan uses Scripture, <coughs> it's kind of like, hey, yeah, that's Scripture, Satan, but you're using it wrong. You're taking it out of context. Here's what it says. Here's what it means. So he was able to resist. We will be able to resist, too, if we know God's Word. And by knowing His Word, we will know His will. We have prayer to resist. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, it says, Praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Do we pray to resist? Do we pray that we'll have the strength to resist, the will to resist, the, the confidence to resist? Is that a part of our prayer life? that we really want to be victorious in this battle. And faith will give us the character to resist. Romans chapter 6, I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. And that might comes by faith. Think of Joshua back in, in the book of Joshua. Be strong, be courageous. The Lord is with you. Character. What do we think of Joshua? One word that would describe him? Character, say. Integrity. Because what, what is it near the end of his life? If you want to serve these gods that you served in Egypt, or if you want to serve the gods of the Amorites, the people whose land that we've taken over, that's your choice. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Commitment, courage, strength, character, all those things. The will to stand up. Good associations. Faith will draw us together with people of faith. And, and when faith gets together, you've probably heard that old uh, illustration of the, 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 the fellow who had fallen away Hadn't been in church for years. The preacher came to his house trying to get him to come back. And, oh, I'm all right, blah, blah, blah. Sitting in front of a fireplace, and the preacher took the poker, pulled out an ember from underneath the, 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 the grate. <laughs> pulled it over by its side, and they slowly watched as that ember went from a glowing red to yucky, dead, ashen nothing. And then the preacher pushed it back over to the coals. And they watched as it brightened up and it glowed once again. There's a reason why God wants us to meet together. Because our faith helps with the will to resist. Helps with the confidence to resist. Helps us understand scriptures to resist. We pray for one another to resist. We get wisdom to resist. I missed that one, didn't I? Character to resist. Good associations 
help us to resist. Let's go back to that wisdom to resist. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. So that we would not be outwitted by Satan. For we are not ignorant of his designs. We know he's out there fighting against us. We know he wants to take away our eternal life. Let's see, we've got to have that wisdom. Wisdom in this battle. And the shield of faith will do that for us. There's a positive power of faith. Positive power. Look. In, a every, or in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. Taking up the shield of faith. You shall be able. That's power. That's power that comes to us. That's the dynamos, not, not the exousia that says, if you believe you have the right to become a child of God. But the dynamos that when you become a child of God, here's power that comes to you. And it may be just in the strength and the perseverance that we gain as a child of God. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Listen to what Jesus said to them. Because of your little faith, they weren't able to do something. For truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Faith empowers God's people. And the first thing we want to do is turn around and make that miraculous, right? Oh, I'll, I'll sit there. Move mountain. Move mountain. God, you're not moving the mountain. Move mountain. Look, we talked about pictures. We talked about metaphors, didn't we? Could it be that this is a metaphor? That if we want a mountain to move, we need to pray about it. And then go get a shovel. Or go get a bulldozer. And get to work moving that mountain. And God will be with us and we can move that mountain. How many mountains were moved in the scriptures? Impossible things done by people who believe. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. If you don't believe me, the heroes of faith, by faith, this person... By faith, Noah built an ark. It had never rained as far as we know on the face of the earth. He built an ark because God said to. But he built it to the salvation of his family. What a wonderful thing. Is that what Jesus is talking about? Abraham, <laughs> take your son, your only son, Isaac, up on Mount Moriah and offer him as a sacrifice. How do you do that if it's not by exceptional faith? David, going up against Goliath, he had to get the rocks. He had to walk up there, and he had to sling that rock. God just didn't do it for him, but faith brought him to that victory. And, and Jeremiah, Jeremiah preaching to a people that didn't want to hear resistant. Tell us what to do and we'll do it. And he tells them what God says to do and they go do the opposite thing. Say, think of the faith that had to be there for people to suffer the things that they suffered simply because of faith. And, and we can do it. Listen, we've got things that we need to be doing. Evangelism, benevolence, edification. Faith is what's going to give us the victory in those things. Faith will get us started. Faith will keep us going. Faith will give us the victory. Faith is not an ecstatic experience, but it's a life lived for Christ directed by His Word. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. That's what Paul said. Paul says, here's why I can do the things that I'm doing. It's faith. It starts with faith. And then getting out there and moving the mountains. And then we have the purpose of faith. 
What's the purpose of that shield? Extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. With faith, we can face the enemy. Romans chapter 16, verse 20, The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Do we believe that? We better believe it. If we don't believe it, Satan's going to win. I say, they had to believe it back then. When the Roman Empire started with their persecution, which was worse than what the Jews could do to them, they had to remain faithful even if it meant death. But what does that shield do? Extinguish the fiery darts of temptation. All the fiery darts. Now, you think about darts as arrows. Like arrows, they come suddenly. Think of Job in the Old Testament. What happened? Enemy raid comes and takes some of his family, kills them. Fire comes down from heaven, takes some of his wealth, his herds and such. Another enemy raid comes and takes the rest of these wealth. Tornado comes. There goes always his home and, and everything that he's got. Chapter 2, here comes the illness. All along his wife saying, why don't you just be like everybody else, curse God and die. Friends come to visit. They're no help, are they? Job just wants an answer. Why? So like arrows, they come suddenly. Temptation comes suddenly. Like arrows, they are numerous. He lost his wealth. Job lost his wealth, lost his family, lost his health. His health. No friends to hell. And where's God? Where's God? Sometimes you just have to wait for God to get there. Like arrows, they come secretly. Job couldn't understand why this was happening to him. He was a good man. He knew he was a good man. He trusted in God. He had great faith. He just wanted to know, why is this happening? Why could God allow this to happen to him? Well, Job finds the answers, doesn't he? And we got to find the answers. Why? Because like arrows, these things are dangerous on James chapter 1 verse 15 Then desire when it is conceived gives birth to sin and sin when it is fully grown gives, brings forth death. Spiritual death. We're not talking about just physical death. We're talking about spiritual death which means hell for eternity. See how important it is? But that's what faith can do for us. The shield of faith leads us to victory over the flesh, the world, the enemy, and over the grave and death. The grave is not the end. Death is not the end. It's just a transition point. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 through 57. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, that's in the resurrection, when we are resurrected at that last day. And the mortal puts on immortality. Then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But that victory is through faith. Faith is the victory by which we overcome the world. We are soldiers in the great eternal conflict. The enemies are many and the enemies are powerful. Let's not forget that. Look at that picture of Satan. A roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Spiritual enemies are tough. We can't face them on our own. But he who is in us is greater than he or all of them who are against us. We've got to remember that. That's where our victory lies. So let's put on and keep on the whole armor of God. Once we have taken up the shield of faith, we need to take the helmet of salvation. 
See, faith alone won't do it. We've got to put on that helmet of salvation to protect up here. You believe in God? You believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? And why not become a child of God today by repenting and being baptized for the remission of sins? Take away that which separates you from God. Start walking that life of faith in Jesus Christ that leads to salvation, that leads to victory. If you have need this morning, we ask you to come. Let your request be made known. Sit up here in the front. Whatever. We'll help you out. But let us know as we stand and sing the invitation song.